Hashem. I want to give all praise, all glory, all honor unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rikakwadash. Double honors goes out to the elder apostles of Great Millstone for teaching me the truth. Also, I want to acknowledge all the Akyam who are pushing the truth with sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm going to do, if the Spirit has me, uh, in Exodus, the first chapter. And um, there's going to be a little background noise because I, I, I rode my uh, my mountain bike over here to a park. So I'm at a park doing this lesson. So this is uh, Exodus 1 and 1. It says, Now these are the names of the sons of Israel which came into Egypt. Every man and his household came with Jacob. And then it names off the 12 tribes of Israel, which are Jacob's sons, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, Issachar, Zebulon, and Benjamin, Dan, and Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. And all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were 70 souls, for Joseph was in Egypt already. All right, the 70 souls represents a complete number, a complete number of souls or spirits or people. It says, and Joseph died, and all his brethren, and all that generation. And the sons of Israel were fruitful, and increased abundantly, and multiplied, and waxed exceeding mighty. With their end, the land was filled with them. So Israel, that's wherever we go. You know, we're, we're as the sands of the sea, and, and you know, we, we multiply. That's part of our... Uh, this part of our characteristic of Israel, you know, we is we Israelites multiply. All right. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. All right. So you see how the Lord set it up. Joseph was a, a man of high stature in ancient Egypt, but he he died. So this was going to be, um, you know, fulfillment of, of prophecy that our people would go under curses, and then we start to be under these curses in ancient Egypt. All right, and now we're in spiritual Egypt, Babylon, America. So that's why there's so many similarities between ancient Egypt and America, because America is spiritual Egypt. It says Revelation 11 and 8, and their dead bodies shall lie in the great in the, uh, shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt. All right, this place is. Sodom and Egypt spiritually not not literally or physically spiritually for those who have eyes to see where also our Lord yet was crucified right Yahushua was crucified in, in well, physically he was crucified in Rome but by the time um, America was established the uh, the Edomites they stopped teaching yeah they, they are they never taught Yahushua but they they crucified Yahweh. I mean, they crossed him out in the Americas. When they brought Christianity, this pagan Christianity, to the Americas, it had to deal with uh, uh, Jesus Christ, which that's them crucif crucifying um, our Lord, Yahweh Shai. All right. But let's go back to Exodus 1. It says 9. And he said unto his people, Behold, the sons of the people of the sons of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply, and it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. All right. So Pharaoh in ancient Egypt, he was uh, intimidated. He was uh, threatened by the way our people were growing in numbers. And really, that's the same thing here in America. You know, that's why they call, have a thing called illegal aliens. You know, and they shoot, uh, you know, the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom in the streets. You know, the, the modern Roman soldier, the police. Because, you know, they, they're okay with they're okay with you niggas and spicks uh, getting killed in the streets. And that just means less, less uh, niggas and spicks. Uh, which really were the Israelites for them to deal with, okay? Um, verse 10, come, oh wait, 11. 
Therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens, and they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Pitam and Ramses. So they afflicted our people. This is a, a oppression in ancient Egypt. All right, verse 12. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew, and they were grieved because of the sons of Israel. All right, and so this is, like I said, a characteristic of the Israelites. No matter how much, we're like the uh, the juggernaut, right, when it comes to making babies and, and producing, uh, you know, just waxing strong, growing in numbers. We're a juggernaut because the juggernaut is the more you attack it, the more powerful it becomes. So it's the same thing here. When they afflict us. We don't stop growing. We we, 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 uh, we multiply, all right? And the, and the wicked elite, they know this. They know we... we uh, that they know that we um, multiply faster than any of the other nations, all right? And it's a threat. It's 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 not kosher for them, for us to grow the way we grow, all right, in numbers. It says, verse 13, And the Egyptians made the sons of Israel to serve with rigor. rigor. So meaning they made us work harder, all right? Because these taskmasters they set over us, they were making us work harder. They were They were all pressing us in the ancient Egypt just like they do here in the spiritual Egypt 14 and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and in brick and in all manner of service in the field all their service wherein they made them serve was with rigor so they, no matter what we do they make us work hard for it you know we got to we built ancient Egypt and we built spiritual Egypt all right verse 15 and the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of the one was Shipra, and the name of the other was Pua. And she, he said, When ye do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women, and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then ye shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. All right, so they know in the scriptures if it's a son, because remember, the Israelites, you, you know, you're an Israelite because you're who your father is, not because who your mother is. So just like ancient Egypt knew this, so does uh, spiritual Egypt. The wicked elite know that there's no such thing as mixed race. That's why they were saying kill the sons, because if there's, they kept killing off the sons and kept the daughters, those daughters would take on heathen men and their, their kids would be heathen. But if you kill the son, then the seed line comes from the son, right? From the father. Let's get that in numbers real quick. Numbers 1, 18. Because when, when, uh, when Moses did a census, um, they lined them up by the pedigree of their fathers. And that shows you, you know, like when they do the polls, that, that, that's, what, that's what tribe you are. That's who you are. That's your, what your race is, your heritage. It comes from your father's seed line. The mother has no bearing on what type of nationality or race you are. Numbers 1 and 18. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month, and they, they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers according to the number of the names from 20 years old and upward by their poles. All right, so that's that. That's the proof how how you know we determine um, whether you're an Israelite is because this, this goes back to the seed line of your father, and really this is ancient Egypt we're reading about. So now because there's been so much um, you know mixing where the the Israelite men have taken on heathen women, now it goes by the spirit is what is going to determine whether you're an Israelite. I mean, it's still by your father's seed line, but a lot of us can't trace back to our family history. So we have to rely on the spirit. Like it tells you, and let's grab that real quick. In Romans. And the spirit determines, you know, you, you test the spirit by the spirit. Oh, wait, did I get the right one? No. Romans 11 and 8. Six. Shoot.
You see, that's why we always in these scriptures, because sometimes you forget the verses. Um, <clears throat> it's Romans, okay, yeah, 8.16, that's right. So we don't, we can't rely on what people look like, because if you do that, you'll be wrong. There's going to be Israelites that look like Edomites or Moabites. They, they look like all the other nations, but they're actually they're actually Israelites. Then you have then you have um, the opposite, the tares, who look like Israelites, but they're actually heathen. Because if their mother's a, an Israelite and their father is a heathen, then, then there's a chance that the, the the offspring comes out looking like looking like the uh, looking like an Israelite. But indeed, you know, if the, it just all depends on what the da the dad is. If the dad is is an Israelite, then the kids are going to be Israelites. But if the mom's an Israelite and the dad's a heathen, then those kids could come out looking like Israelites, but they're actually heathen, or which is another word for that. When that happens, is tares. All right, this is Romans 8, 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Yahweh Shai from the dead, do, oh, I'm sorry, 16 is what I need to grab. This is, because remember, we don't, we can't judge off of the book from the outside of its cover. All right, you can't judge a book by its cover. So just like you can't judge an Israelite by the way he looks, it's all about the spirit. If he believes in this truth, if he can come into the fold of Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai, then that's an Israelite. Because no heathen can receive this knowledge and this truth. Romans 8, 16. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the sons of the Most High. So it's your spirit. Okay? It's not about how you look in this day and age. All right. Let's get to... That's why the the uh, Pharaoh was asking the midwives to kill the sons. Okay. And let's read this. <laughs> but the midwives, this is Exodus 1 and 17. But the midwives feared the Most High and did not, at, did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men, children alive. So these midwives, the, the Lord Yahweh put a spirit on them not to kill, not to follow through with the commandment, all right? So they were, uh, they were deceitful with, with uh, the, the king of Egypt, with the Pharaoh. Verse 18, And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, Why have ye done this thing and have saved the men children alive? So he was pissed off, you know, asked, questioning them why they didn't do as he commanded. In verse 19, And the midwife said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively and are delivered, ere the midwives come in unto them. So the, that shows you there's a difference between our people and our women, you know. Because our women are the salt of the earth, just like our men. We're the salt of the earth. So we're more lively than the heathen. All right? And so this was their reasoning. They were like, we, you know, they didn't want to do that to the, the women of Egypt, of, of the Hebrew women, which another, you know, the Hebrew women were actually the Israelites that we're reading about here. So let's get that real quick. I think it's in Matthew 6, but I could be wrong, but we're the salt of the earth, okay? The salt of the earth, KJV. Oh, shit. Let me see. I think it's Matthew 6, but I could be wrong. Um, Matthew 5, all right. Matthew 5 and 13, it says, Ye are the salt of the earth, meaning we're more lively, like we read in Exodus. Our, our women are more lively. We got that flavor. We're salty, you know. But if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? If it is thence for good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men, all right? So, 
That's why those women were saying, oh, these women are more lively than the Egyptian women. They got more salt. They got more flavor. They didn't want to they didn't want to be killing off the, the salt of the earth, basically what they were telling Pharaoh. And then this is verse 18. I'm sorry, verse 19. Verse 20. Therefore, the Most High dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and waxed very mighty. So it was the, uh, the spirit of Yahweh that jumped on those women at, not to kill the babies, all right? So you got to remember, Yahweh, he, he controls everything, man. He puts the spirit on people to do the things they do. And in this case, he put a righteous spirit on these midwives where they didn't kill the men, the, the, the male babies, all right? And preserved the, the Israelite nation, really, and made it wax uh, strong and mighty, like it says. Verse 22, And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born ye shall cast into the river, and every daughter ye shall save alive. All right. So this is basically leading up to Moses. All right. Because, you know, Moses was found in, in the river by Pharaoh's daughter, which was another thing that was spiritual set up by, guess who? The Most High Yahweh. So I'm going to go ahead and close out. And, uh, you know, just wanted to go in on a quick lesson while I'm here. At the park, I did a little bike ride and I wanted to go in in Exodus 1. So, um, you know, hopefully the lesson was edifying. But with that, I want to give all praise, all honor, all glory unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rukakudash. Double honors goes out to the elder apostles of Great Millstone for teaching me the truth. Also, I want to acknowledge all the Akya who are pushing this truth with sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth. Shalom to the elect.